Hey everybody, it is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures. Hope you all are doing very well today. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking all about some bracelets that have sold for me for $25 or more. I'm sharing this video because I get a lot of questions uh, from people that are interested in getting into jewelry. Oh my gosh, let me mute myself over here. There we go. Ah, sorry. Of course, there's going to be technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, got it. I am live. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm doing this video because I get a lot of questions about jewelry, people wanting to get into it, not sure, not sure where to start. And so I thought I would share with you some of the pieces that have sold for me for $25 or more that are bracelets, uh, so you can get an idea of what you might look for while you're out and about. It's important to note that it doesn't have to be gold or silver for it to bring a profit, so definitely look at some other things. So we'll take a look at those. So before I get started, before I say hey in the chat, hello, my name is Margaret. Welcome if you're new. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I make videos all about making and saving money. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and lots of my videos have to do with jewelry, jewelry education, learning about stones, and how to test jewelry, what to look for. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe to my channel. I make videos about other things too, like print on demand, um, just different ways to make money as a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad if you're a dad too. So here we go. Let me say hey in the chat and then we'll jump into some of the bracelets that have sold for me for $25 or more. Hello in the chat. Hi, Debbie. Hello, exceptional treasure. That's Monica and Julie, the Thrifty Paper Garden. Hello, Patty. How are you? So my... I, I went back and forth on this video just trying to decide whether or not I should just share all the bracelets that sold from this year or if I should just focus on the higher ticket item ones. So I may come back and show. I sell a lot of bracelets for $20 and less, you know, between $10, $20. And when I pick up jewelry, usually it's for pennies to up to a buck or two. I don't usually, unless it's amazing, don't go over maybe two or three dollars unless I really think it's going to bring a nice profit. So even if I pick up a bracelet for a buck or two and sell it for fifteen dollars, it's still a pretty good profit and it's something small that doesn't take up a lot of space. I can store tons of jewelry in my house without my, you know, without my husband knowing how much stuff I have. So yeah, let's take a peek at some of the things that I've sold. Hello! So these, <clears throat> I have all my Etsy windows pulled up, but some of these sold on eBay, but eBay history doesn't go back that far. My Etsy history will, so I can share with you which is which. So first up, yes, this fish bracelet sold for, let's see, hang let me get my chat down here. Now there are a couple that snuck in that are a little bit less than 25 bucks, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and share it anyway. So this bracelet's over 20 bucks. So it's a little bit less than 25, but I got this in a big lot. If you watch me for a while, you may have seen that big giant tub of bracelets that I got at a garage sale for $4. And in that, um, in that lot, I had a Tiffany and Company bracelet, which I didn't end up listing online. One of my viewers bought it. So there was another piece that sold, you know, it ended up being a real Tiffany and Company bracelet and one of my viewers bought it for, I think it was 80 or 100 bucks, um, but this was also in there. So again, a big giant tub of bracelets for four bucks. If you see something like that, it's four dollars, you know, give it a go, give it a try, right? So yeah, this one sold for $20 and I mean pennies is what I paid for it because of because I got it in that big lot, which is another great way, you know, if you guys have watched any of my jewelry jar videos, you know, I'll get a jar full of jewelry and by the time you average everything out, it's, you know, a quarter, 50 cents for a piece. So that's the first one. Next up is this bracelet. This was, and again, this is an older listing. As you can see, my pictures are not amazing, but this is an Alice in Wonderland bracelet that it says, you know, made in one way, made with care in Wonderland. It just has all these keys on it. This one sold for, let me flip over here. This one sold for $55. So it wasn't anything. It was just a Disney couture bracelet and somebody was willing to pay that. I think I picked it up for a couple bucks. It's been a little while ago. So definitely, and this is something else. I was just talking with my friend, Nick Hills. Let me flip over. I was just, um, Nick Hills, if you don't follow him, Nick and Andrea Hills, I'm going to be, we've recorded it this morning, but I'm going to be on his channel 
Thursday, which is tomorrow. Wait, no, not tomorrow. Oh gosh, I'm a day's wrong. Thursday. Um, about we were talking about jewelry, and one of the things that I mentioned to him was, you know, look for for somebody who's just getting into it. Look for animals. Look for collectibles because there there's a collector for everything. So while this this Alice in Wonderland bracelet may not be overtly Alice. There are people who, like my mother, who collects Alice in Wonderland stuff. If she's watching, sorry, mom, had to sell it. <laughs> I know, Julie, the, she's like, she knows. In the chat, Julie's like, wait, wait, you sold an Alice bracelet? <laughs> Did you ask your mother? Yeah, my mom's an Alice nut. Everything Alice in Wonderland. So same thing with this fish. There are people that, you know, collect fish. So if you're just thinking of diving into selling jewelry, that's definitely something to consider. If you see a toucan brooch or a donkey brace, I mean, just weird, like people, I mean, what you might think is weird. It's not necessarily weird, but definitely there is a collector for everything. Let's see. D Delinda's asking, do I mostly buy it now on eBay? I do. I, because I sell a lot of my things on Etsy and eBay, I cross post if I can, if it's vintage. <clears throat> I set the price I want, a high price. We'll talk about that more in a minute. I set a high price on my pieces and then put a buy it now with best offer on eBay because one, jewelry is pretty small so you can store it and if I'm not hurting for the cash immediately, it's okay for me to put the high price on it and put it in my storage and wait for the wait for the right buyer to come along. Hello in the chat. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hello if I missed you saying hi to everybody. So that that was that. I have to clear my throat. Apologies, y'all. Oh, I can't mute. Oh, yes, I can. Here we go. Okay, we've had a front come through, so there's something in the air. Okay, so that's the Alice one. Yes, shh, don't tell my mother. <laughs> but come on, a girl's got to feed her, feed herself coffee. <laughs> yeah, so that was 55 bucks. Okay, so here's another one. People, there are collectors for suns and starbursts and all sorts of things. I mean, they're, like I say, there's a collector for everything out there. So this silver sun starburst or like swirly sun bracelet, um, again, picked up for maybe a buck or two and it sold, hang on, I've got my little clippy things out, out of order down here. And uh, this sold for $35, y'all, $34.99 is what this sold for. So again, don't be afraid to ask that high price. And it says, you know, it was stamped MEX inside, which may be like, um, not, it's not going to be a sterling silver, but somebody saw this and definitely, definitely did that. How did I get on the live chat? You want to... Hi, welcome to the live chat. So again, ask for that high price and be willing to wait for it. If you go just off of eBay solds, and there's a piece that's coming up that I'll talk about um, you know, if you just go off of eBay solds, you may be underselling something. So don't be afraid to ask a higher price. You can't get a lot if you don't ask for a lot, right? I've said that forever. All right, next up, we have this spiderweb bracelet. This just sold recently. Yes, it sold for... And this one also, I think this was also in that $4 tub. I got a ton of bracelets out of that. So this one sold for $24.99. It was this sort of gunmetal gray, <clears throat> pardon me, bracelet that sold for $24.99. And again, probably got for, or maybe it was in a jewelry jar. I think it was in a jewelry jar. So again, it, even still, like maybe 50 cents or a dollar worth. But take a look also at my keywords. This is another question I get a lot or comment I get a lot, how can you get this price for something that's not marked? You know, this doesn't have a brand. This is not a fancy costume jewelry. This is not, well, you're going after people that are buying for a genre or a look that they that they have going on. So getting those keywords in the title description and on Etsy using those, um, what do they call them now? The tags for search engine optimization are key. So I definitely got spider web in there, large cuff, dark gray, open, you know, and then I separated spider web, Halloween, goth, trying to get as many, like put your, put yourself in the mind of the buyer. What are they going to type in to find this bracelet that sold for $24.99, right? Okay, one which lady says, I remember you getting that in the jar because I remember. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I was like, yeah, I think I, it was in a jar. I think that was why I bought the jar. And the jar, you know, the jar, like this particular jar costs sixteen ninety nine. That one, the one I got that one out of maybe 25 30 bucks. 
some of some places they they cost a bit more. <coughs> Pardon me, you guys. Hey, Joni. Hi, hi. Sorry if I'm. Hey, crafty reseller. Hello, hello. Okay, next, this bracelet again. It just looks pretty standard, like a you know, it's concave. It's this brush gold, but somebody is going and I and I did have this up for a while, um, but you know, somebody was looking for that look and bought this bracelet for $24.99. And there we have it. Let's see, how do I determine the age of the piece? Well, I go by, one, the style and the look of it. Sometimes you can tell by the way it's put together or the clasp. Sometimes it's, and I know there's a lot of reproduction stuff out there, so it can get tricky. But yeah, usually I go for, you know, the style of it, the way it's made, and the look of it. Now, if it's marked Forever 21 or something like that, or Claire's. Now, Claire's was around when I was a little girl, so um, it could still be vintage and be Claire's, but I just dated myself. <laughs> but yeah, you just kind of, especially when it's not marked, you have to kind of go on your gut with that one as far as um, Etsy is concerned. So there's this piece. And I got this in a lot a while back. Then this one, again, this was one that, oh gosh, where did I get this one? I think this one, I either got an lot in an auction or I picked it up at a garage sale. It's been a while. And I remember like, this is so not my style of bracelet. So, um, but I'm finding my, this sold for $24.99, you know, gold serpentine hinge. Again, just getting those um, keywords in there, Roman jewelry, snake-like bracelet, because it kind of looked like a snake to me. And it was marked Roman, which is a which is a, a brand name. So that was something that sold for $24.99. And that's something else to think about too, is just because it's not your style and that and for me, it, I have to keep that in mind because I'll look at things like who is wearing this? Because I wear pretty minimalist, small, usually smaller things. And sometimes I look at things like who is wearing this piece of jewelry? But there is there's a buyer out there for everything, trust me. <laughs> Okay, next up, this is the piece that I was telling you about. And again, I did not even fill out my title all the way. That's so much older it was <clears throat> when I made this listing. But this bracelet sold for 20, no, no, 70, where did they go? 75 bucks is what I think it sold for. Yeah, this, this bracelet sold for $75. It went to Sweden. And this is the one that I was saying, there are solds on eBay and Etsy of this is a called Damascene of Damascene bracelets that are selling for $25, $35, $40. Uh, but this one I really thought was unique. I really liked that it had a geisha on it. I my gut was just telling me, no, this one looks way nicer. It looks way cooler. There's just something like I didn't see a geisha on some of the other ones that sold for those lower prices. So I just thought, okay, I am gonna put that high price on this and wait. I'd rather keep it and wait than sell it for cheap. So that is what I did. Joan, let's see, does jewelry do better on Etsy or eBay for you, one please? It does better on Etsy, but it still sells pretty good on, on eBay as, as well. I was just, hey, Nick is there, Nick, yeah. I was just telling Nick, like, I was going through my bracelets to, to narrow down which ones to show, and I think, there were 50 that had sold on Etsy and like 20 something that had sold on eBay. So they still sell on eBay, but definitely sell more on Etsy. I sell better faster on eBay for my jewelry, Debbie says. Sell them for more on... Yeah, it takes longer. And that's the thing. My strategy with jewelry is I put the high price on it. I think I may have already said this in the video. I put a high price on it on both, on both platforms and then best offer on eBay. So if somebody comes along on eBay and wants it, sends me a, you know, a best offer, I can consider taking that, so. Yeah, all right. Yeah, if, if gut feeling, if it, tells you, if it tells you to raise your price, do it, don't be afraid. Exactly, Monica, exactly. Let's see, okay, so next up is this bone bracelet, and we were just talking about bone um, this week in my jewelry lovers group. And I just did a video where, I was talking to Nick about this behind the scenes too, um, where I did a video, it was like a quiz time video where you, you know, I, I shared different pieces of bone, ivory, 
and celluloid because it's important to know what you've got and and whether or not you can sell it legally, right? So I had a I had, did get a comment on one of those videos from somebody who's totally against ivory, which I, I'm not for ivory at all, but I think it's important to know how to identify them. I think it's really important to know, I'm gonna get on my soapbox here, I, it's really important when you're out to know, you know, if you're holding a piece of celluloid or if you're holding a piece of ivory and the laws and the implications of, of selling those, like ivory basically, unless you've got paperwork proving it's before a certain date, you just can't even sell it. So yeah, the whole point of that was educational, not um, taking a stand on whether it was okay or not. Anyway, whatever. So this bracelet, moving on off the soapbox, this bracelet sold for $60. And I, I picked this up, I believe, at a garage sale for, for a buck or two. Hello, hello. Let's see, do I double listen? I do. I, I cross post pretty much everything. Um, the only times I don't is if it's not vintage. It'll just go on eBay. But if it's vintage, then I can put it on both on eBay and Etsy. And this one, take guesses in the chat. So this is a silver onk bracelet. Um, 20, uh, 925, so it's sterling silver. And at the time I was trying out free shipping. I don't really do free shipping anymore. <clears throat> but take a guess at what this sold. So this is another one that might surprise you at the price that you can put on some things. I know I'm, I've am i got a little bit, let's see. Well, much lady, you can sell vintage ivory in Canada without paperwork. You can, yeah, it, and it does vary from country to country and for, even from state to state. Some states, you can sell it within the state. Um, but yeah, it's just important to know the laws as far as that goes, which was my point in the video. Well, my point was identifying it, but in the group, in, in jewelry lovers and sellers, we're gonna be talking more about the laws and things like that. We'll dive deeper. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you the price. This sold for, drum roll please, $54.99. So again, don't be afraid to ask a high price for your jewelry pieces. Sterling silver, onk, bracelet, $54.99. So, and I can't remember why I decided to put such a high price on it. I think maybe either I didn't see one just like it, which if I don't see something like what I'm selling, then I always jack the price up. But this seems like something I probably would have seen. But anyway, it sold for $54.99. And I don't remember wait, waiting that long for it either. Hi in the chat. Okay, okay. So, and this one actually went to Italy. I'm looking at my, I have a little window open telling me where it went and everything. So next up, we have this bracelet. This is milk glass. These milk glass um, pieces that are carved to look like scarabs. So there you've got two collectors. There are people that collect milk glass. Then there are people that collect scarabs. And I am a sucker for any, like, bracelets with safety chains. I don't know why. I just love the look of, of these, you know, it's like a little safety chain that in case your bracelet comes unhooked, it's got this chain, the safety chain, right? So this scarab bracelet, milk glass, sold for $24.99. Very cool. Then next, okay, so now we're getting into the ones that sold on eBay. Pardon me while I take a sip of water. <clears throat> so I frequent, oh, I should have grabbed that other one. I know it didn't, I'll, I'll, I'll do another video talking about some of that, but there was another bracelet that I sold on eBay I'll challenge myself to to see can I can I sell this? You know, will it really sell? It was plastic. And if you've watched a while, you you've heard this story. It was just like a plastic red, white and blue plastic beads, stretchy elastic bracelet that had a little American flag like medallion on it that was metal. And I got it from a jewelry jar and I was like, I'm going to challenge myself and see if I can sell this. And it sold for 10 bucks. You know, where it was just like, normally I would have just probably tossed it in a lot or re-donate. And it sold pretty quickly, too. So, like, you know, with anything, just give it a try. These are three or four. It's four little twisty bangle bracelets I lotted up. I put um, $19.99 on them. I, on these ones, I may have taken a best offer. If I can't remember, I'll tell you. But I may have taken a best offer on this one. But still... It might have been just something that I was like, you oh, know, just throw it in a lot. Why not, right? 
Um, how much was the shipping to Italy? Okay, the shipping to Italy was, since I still have it up, da, 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 um, I put $13. I'm not sure that it, that was, I don't have the receipt pulled up, but $13 is what I put on it to Italy. Okay. Oh, you like the yeah, blue nails. All right, sidetracks. Here we go. So next up, this bracelet. Now here's where it's important to search what the, because certain chains have names like the weave of the chain has certain names so knowing that this was a byzantine style chain um, helped i think with the sale on it because there are people that really like that style you know so again has that safety chain which i love um yeah so this one again it has 37.99 on that so there's that and i think that came from a a lot too all right, now these ones, again, I, I'm a rock hound. So as soon as I saw these bracelets at this garage sale, I knew what they were. This is a, something called crinoid, which is a oceanic, it's a fossil basically. But yeah, these are crinoids and they have these sort of like circle, they were these ocean, little ocean critters, right? So um, yeah, these two crinoid bracelets, again, I put a high price on these because I thought, you know what, uh, if I'm going to sell them, and, and I think I did take a best offer on them, but it was still pretty significant. And I think I paid five bucks for them at a garage sale. So there were two of them. They were in this case, in like little case. So you can kind of see a real close up. It's these, <laughs> they're not always pink and white, but sometimes they're like, you'll just see white ones or pink ones. But yeah, these are crinoids. So I put in there, you know. Petrified, stone, marble, yeah, crinoids, fossils. <clears throat> I probably could have gotten, oh, I did get fossil in there. Fossil and fossilized, yeah, okay. So the, that's a crinoid. It, it's handy to to know your <laughs> your rocks, your minerals, and the uh, and fossils and things like that because that can sell for good money. All right, so next up we have, again, just one that looks... I have a couple $20 ones that snuck in. So, but I wanted to show it was just a simple little thin cuff. It was pretty weighty, but again, getting that minimalist in there, rounded, gold tone, simple, because people might be looking for just something, you know, simple, not in your face, right? Uh, let's see, Gem Lady, are you still using iPhone to take pictures? I am. And I actually have a video that I did not too long ago about um, how I take pictures of my jewelry and. Yeah, I use my iPhone and it, it was, I thought, a pretty good video <laughs> showing, you know, because you can get really good shots with your phone. So that one was 20 bucks. Then next up, now this one, <clears throat> this one actually was missing one of the little pearls. And you can see you know, there's a teeny, can you see my, you can't see my, my little pointer. There's a little, four little seed pearl like bead things around. And like that one has one, but it's missing three. So this one was missing, missing some of them. And look, it was missing one of the pearly things there, but it's still sold. And I'm pretty sure I took a best offer on this one, but this is a Whiting Davis, Whiting and Davis, silver tone mesh, but there are collectors for this. So somebody probably picked it up. I think even if I took a best offer, it was probably around 20 bucks, uh, but there are people that will, will get it and, and repair it because they like the style or they like, you know, collecting that brand, Whiting Davis. So, hello, hello. I'm sorry if I missed any questions. I'm not real deep in the chat today. Let me know if I if you have any questions. Let me see, pull it up here a little bit. There, hello. We've got a couple more. Um, so here's another one. And this one, I this one sold for 30 bucks. I, again, I was trying out the free shipping, um, but it's got that bamboo look to it. It's a gold tone clamper. So knowing that, you know, that's a style of bracelet, it's a clamper, it's got like a hinge in it and clampers open and close. So knowing, because there are people that like that clamper bracelet. So yeah, again, 30 bucks for clamper bracelet. Gold tone, not real gold or anything like that. Thank you so much. If you're enjoying this, go over there and hit the thumbs up button, friends. All right. Hi, Beth. <laughs> Okay, so this is another one. This is Silver Stars. It's got kind of a Western look to it. Did I put Western? No, I did not. Um, but if I were to list this again, I might go back and make sure I get Western in there. 
cowboy, something like that. Silver stars bracelet. I did put Lone Star State, Texas stars. Um, but this was silver tone, so it's not sterling silver, but still sold for $27.99. Again, certain styles of jewelry, if somebody's going to, I don't call it the honky tonk anymore, if they're going to the, you know, go country dancing, or they're going to the rodeo, and they have a look they're trying to, to portray, then they're going to look for that western style jewelry, or that southwest style jewelry, you know. For sure. And then here we have got, and I think, okay, this was gold tone. It might have been like gold plated, but this is a gold tone bracelet with emerald green stones. This was a really early listing because my, my title, I can tell. But when the pictures are not amazing, too, the title is not amazing either. But $24.99. Yeah, green jadeite stones. So there we have that. So those. Um, and the reason, let me go back to that one. A lot of times when you see bracelets or earrings or rings or things like that, that you are questioning whether they're of good quality, flip them over and look at the back and see if the stone is exposed in the back. It's not always a sign of the stone being something significant, but it's something to definitely look at. So if you've got a I'm trying to see, I have those earrings somewhere around here. I have a mess on my table. But if you've got a piece that you think, oh, this might be amber or these might be, you know, jade or something cool, flip it over and see if you can see the stone through the back of the piece. Because a lot of times, not always, that'll be an indication that it's a nicer quality. Usually, if somebody's got, say, an amber bracelet, they're going to leave it open in the back because you want to be able to hold it up to the light and see the light shine through it, the stone and everything. Um, if it's totally closed off on the back, like it's just mounted on there, it's maybe not. And, and I want to say it's always or because there's going to always be exceptions to the rule. But that's something to keep an eye out for. Flip it over and look at the back and see how it's put together. See if you can see the stones through the back. Okay. So those are some of the bracelets that have sold for $25 or more. And I am going to be doing more of these, sharing some of the other pieces of jewelry. You know, I may do some that are earrings or rings, things like that. And, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, yeah, so definitely if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those. But I've got lots more coming up. So you, if you're thinking about getting into jewelry, you've got some jumping off points and some tips that you can keep kind of filed away when you're run into some jewelry, box of jewelry at a garage sale. You can poke around in it and see if you find anything worth listing. Let's see. Patty's asking, uh, looking back, do you ever regret selling something way too cheap? Oh, I think so. I'm trying to think if I have something that I can think of off the top of my head, but I I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'm, you know that feeling when you sell, you list something and it sells like that? That's when you're like, oh, maybe I should have looked at that a little closer. Um, but yeah, and, and again, I was talking with Nick. I'm, he, if you don't follow Nick and Andrea, uh, I was talking to him about a pair of cufflinks that I found for a dollar and took to the gold man and sold just for scrap value for 450 bucks. So that one, it's like, I know I could have listed them and got more because that was just the scrap value on them. But... I wanted the, you know, bird in the hand is what I tell them. Bird in the hands were two in the bush, and I was ready for that 450. <laughs> anyway, okay. Again, thank you so much, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know you are here if you're watching later. And if you have any ideas or things that you've got questions about, let me know in the comment section if I can create a video that might meet some of the needs that you've got. So thanks again, you guys, and go over there and hit that like button. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.